Hello and welcome to another section of this complete NestJS course. In the last section, we learned about authentication and authorization in NestJS. And if you remember, in the last lecture, we learned that when a user logs in to our NestJS Web API application, after successfully login, the application sends an access token to the client in the response. And this access token should be saved on the client. And whenever user wants to access a protected resource, with the request, the access token should be attached to the request header. Now, this access token has an expiration time and we have set it to 3600 in our application. That means the expiration time for the access token in our application is one hour. And that also means that after one hour, the access token will expire and the user will have to re-authenticate himself to further use the application. That means after one hour, the user will have to log in again with the login UI where the user will provide his email, a username and password and make a login request again. So this the user will have to do after every one hour once the last JSON web token issued for the user has expired. Now the reason why we keep a shorter expiration time for access token is because it acts as an identity for the logged in user and they are stored on the client either in the cookie or in the local storage. And when you try to access an application using, let's say, a browser, anyone can get access to that browser and grab that access token and use it for authentication. And that's why the shorter the access token lives, the higher the security. Now, what we might want to do is, let's say, if the user is active and his JWT is going to expire in few minutes, we can write a logic to re-authenticate the user automatically without user having to log in again using the login window. And this can be done with the help of refresh token. Refresh tokens are tokens that let you generate access tokens automatically. Remember that refresh tokens are not the replacement for access tokens. But refresh tokens can be used to generate access tokens automatically without the user having to re-login again. And this is the use of refresh token. So there are three points you need to remember about refresh tokens. Refresh tokens are also JSON web tokens. That means they are generated in the same way as the access token. Refresh tokens have small payload than the access token. And refresh token has higher expiration time. So when we create a refresh token, there we specify less payload and there we also set the expiration time for refresh token higher so that before the access token gets expired, we can use that refresh token to generate a new access token. So the only purpose of refresh token is to generate fresh access tokens. And it is also recommended to keep different payloads for access and refresh token so that they cannot be used interchangeably. So now the question is, how does the concept of refresh token works? As I mentioned before, refresh tokens are also JSON web tokens generated using the same strategy, but refresh token has minimum payload, a payload which is different from access token, and they have a higher expiration time. Till now, what we were doing is we were just returning an access token in the response when a user is successfully logged in. But now in this section of this course, we will change that logic to return both access token and refresh token in the response after the user is successfully logged in. Now, the reason for returning both access token and refresh token in the response is that in the front end application, both these tokens will be saved on the client and then on the front end application, the developers usually keep a check on when the last access token was issued. As soon as the access token is about to expire, the front end application requests a new access token with the help of refresh token without letting the logged in user know. So as a front end developer, the developer has to write a logic which will keep a check on when the JSON web token is going to expire. As soon as the JSON web token the access token is about to expire, the client will automatically make a request to the server and this request will be made to an endpoint called refresh token and this is a custom name. You can call this endpoint anything, but I'm calling it as refresh token. So 
to this endpoint a post request will be made in that post request this refresh token will be passed as a request body once this refresh token is received on the server the server will validate the refresh token if the refresh token is valid in that case the server will generate a new access token and a new refresh token and it will send it in the response to the client so now the client is receiving both access token as well as refresh token and both of them will be saved on the client and every time the user needs to be re-authenticated automatically a post request will be sent to this endpoint with the latest refresh token using which again a new token a new access token and a refresh token will be created and it will be sent back to the client in the response and all this we will understand practically in our coming lectures okay so since refresh token has a higher expiration time as compared to access token refresh token can be used to generate access tokens and that's the only purpose of having refresh tokens and this process it will keep on happening till your refresh token does not expire and with this kind of solution in place you have a security of keeping the expired time for access token as low as possible and still giving a good experience to your user because they do not have to log into your application again and again now from the next lecture we are going to work on creating refresh token and also an endpoint in our application to generate new set of tokens automatically when the client requests it and also remember that the logic of requesting a new access token automatically before the last access token expires it should be done from the front end so this was a theoretical overview of how refresh token works now we are going to start off with practical implementation from our next lecture so if you have any questions from this lecture if you have any questions about refresh token it will get cleared in the coming lectures but still you can go ahead and you can ask your queries in the comment and i'll try to answer them as soon as possible so this is all from this lecture thank you for listening and have a great day